Every car in our workshop is of course special, but maybe this one's the most special. So originally it was a 1986 110. So before the name Defender even existed, but essentially it is a Defender. If you, if you think about it that way, it's, it's the trans, past the transition. It is the first of the coil sprung Land Rovers instead of the leaf springs of the series. It's got all the recognizable elements of a Defender, the bigger windscreen, all the body panels, the, the wheel arches, all of this kind of stuff. So it, it shares most of its DNA with Defenders up until the end of production. There is a few little unique things that came uh, with, with the county and with that in the sort of 1986 era, these few little transition things, most of them actually cosmetic. It shares more with Defenders than it does with Series. This would have been a V8 as far as we can tell. It was modified by the previous owner and they'd put an Isuzu diesel engine in. Uh, that was, I think, an option at the time, but, but this one was definitely converted after that. Uh, we've pulled all that out, of course, and replaced it with a Tesla large drive unit uh, in the center where the transmission would have been. So rotated Tesla would have been in the back. This is now rotated 90 degrees. It's gone from a nine, nine to one reduction to about a four and a half to one reduction. It's got a torque biasing diff in there. So we get constant uh, output front and rear. So constant all drive, four wheel drive in this vehicle. This is where it gets uh, a little bit more exciting from my perspective anyway, and maybe from Frida's. Um, this is the Tesla large drive unit that's in here in the center of the chassis. And while they look symmetrical, it's actually uh, half of it is the controller. So the circuit boards, the, the DC to AC inverter, the other half's the motor itself. In the middle here is the gearbox, so the single reduction gear, which we've you know lowered to four and a half to one to get a better ratio to the original Land Rover diffs. So at the front and rear of this comes uh, the prop shafts. And they're original, but extended a little bit. Uh, so rebalanced with the proper uh, flanges into here and everything, and, and then just driving the original axles. While I say original axles, we actually have torque biasing diffs in those as well to give kind of an automatic locker feel. So it's just, I guess, a full auto four drive experience um, with a lot of capability. This vehicle's needed a, a fair bit of work. You can see the maroon uh, windscreen surround. That's because we're using a lot of parts from actually a 1999 Defender. This vehicle looked pretty good. Maybe I'll put a photo up here. So it looked pretty good, but underneath that was ooh, a lot of, held together with a lot of Sikaflex, let's say. And Sikaflex used as a, uh, I guess an aesthetic element in the car and a design feature, maybe a little too much, but underneath that was some, uh, you know, it's a 40 year old car nearly. So it had a lot of, um, you know, just had a lot of rust. It had a lot of things that needed to be improved. So we bought a 1999 Defender or Extreme was the badging, Australian special edition uh, Extreme that we used and, and salvaged a lot of the better panels for. It wasn't in the best condition either, but it gave us a few things like, uh, and a rear axle with disc brakes, so we still keep the Salisbury diff, but we get the rear uh, disc brakes. Um, some you know, windscreens around, of course, better mount points for the rear seats, a tub in better condition, a few other things that are just, just lifted, in, and also the bulkhead, which was quite rusted out. There's some really cool stuff we've done in terms of interior mods, because of the fact that we don't have a transmission anymore, and a giant bell housing to work with, and some other mods that customer requests around what we're doing with the interior and how we do the sound system and how we do the uh, interior trim and features. So this is where things start to get a little more unique and from the outside will be, well, not from the outside, from the inside, it'll be obvious that this is a different uh, kind of Land Rover. So the dash for the most part will be from the 1999. That, that's very, very similar. 80s, 90s, early 2000s Land Rover dashes were broadly similar. Um, we will be picking up or sort of making some mods that keep it a little bit more in tune with the county, so the 86 spec. It'll be quite simple. Look, it's going to have Apple CarPlay and a touchscreen and all that, but, but otherwise quite simple control mechanisms, particularly around how we change direction and drive mode. But the big change that you'll first notice is the lack of transmission tunnel. So usually a manual vehicle or automatic vehicle, four wheel drive like this, the big bell, the gearbox and then the bell housing. So that area where it connects from gearbox to motor is here and is quite a large uh, tunnel and hump, right? Where the gear stick comes out. We don't need that. So we can do this kind of 30 millimeter hump 
uh, over the Tesla motor and give a lot of uh, space for the person who's going to be sitting uh, in the center seat. So we're going to put three seats in this. And that really will be the biggest clue when you look in that this Land Rover is electric. With heating and air conditioning, Defenders are notoriously bad at that. These in Australia, they came with um, an air conditioning unit that sort of sat under here. The compressor sort of lived under here. It had no foot space for the passenger. It was kind of a terrible arrangement and it really just cooled your knees. Um, what you find living with a Defender, uh, this classic style of Defender, is that you actually want, for the most part, the heating and the cooling to come out the, what would be the demist vents, all these things. Um, and that's because the windscreen's right here, so it actually diffuses, bounces off the windscreen and diffuses back and gives you a, I guess, a, a softer uh, HVAC than you would if it was coming out the sort of mediocre vents that stick around the cabin. So this customer who owns uh, a number of Defenders or has, has owned Defenders knows that they just always leave it to demist and run everything through that. So it makes our uh, HVAC plumbing a bit easier because we're running everything through these ports. But to make it a little bit nicer and to cool this cabin. I mean, it's a, it's a dual cab, it's not huge, but we're actually running from the heater unit that will be here. We're actually running some plumbing under past the Tesla motor, and we're gonna exit here in the back footwell. So we can get uh, a lot more heat, cold, whatever we need, back into this section of the car and get a nice, uh, I guess, get a nice flow through the vehicle. So we'll be, uh, returning the air through the footwell and then getting a nice flow through the vehicle so we can heat and cool it quite quickly um, and not just have have the, the front passengers cool but get it to the rear passengers as well. The other kind of changes or, or mods I guess are anything you see that's the maroon colour that's the uh, 1999 vehicle everything else is the 1986 so that includes the, the roof these, these doors that were once white, but then were repainted green, um, the, the rear cab section, that kind of thing. You can see this sort of wax sprayed in. These, these doors from 86 were better conditioned than the 99 doors that we, that we used, and they have some special uh, unique features that, that existed in that era. So they had the series door handles, so the lift up inset door handles, uh, but also had interior door latches and wind up windows. So this combination, this transition period that kind of sets them apart and, and you know, has some good features, has some bad features. Um, so this will be a very manual vehicle. Manual windows will have central locking, but, but otherwise be quite simple. There's a little bit of repair to do on these doors and on the skins, but they're not so bad. What you can see in the rear is um, some custom, well, wood at the moment, but will be custom metal work to uh, then house the subwoofer, and some other electronics that are going in here. This is gonna live in the country. There's a uh, 5G repeater. There's a few other little bits of electronics that we'll all put behind the back seat. We've also picked up some of the, you can sort of see them up in the corners, but just picked up the better seat belt mounting. It's a lot of what we do with these cars is uh, just improve the way the seat belts mount, improve the safety as much as we can, strengthen things, add a bit more support, um, make the seats more comfortable, all of that. Talking about the seats, I'm not going to get to it yet, but this car has some custom fabric woven for it. So it's a combination of leather and a custom weave to match the environment this is going to live in. So the, the whole vehicle really thought of uh, from a design point of view in terms of exterior colour and how that flows through the interior. And it's going to be quite a special place to be. 10 batteries in the front, 10 Tesla modules, 6 Tesla modules in the rear, these are from a 90 kilowatt hour, as what would that be? A, uh, probably a P90. Uh, so when they did the 90 kilowatt hour uh, Teslas, so a significant amount of battery power. Under the front here, it's, um, well, wood at the moment, but uh, just as a mock-up for what will be the, I guess, the pretty cover. Maybe it adds a few extra horsepowers or something, um, but it will look cool. Uh, what you can also see at the front here is the radiator system and the cooling. And EVs definitely need cooling, but it's a different level of cooling and, and, and perhaps, you know, thermal management. All right, that sounds fancy, but it, sometimes you're actually needing to heat things rather than cool them. So, you know, even if you consider a Tesla, it does have a big radiator. It's just usually sitting horizontally under the car. So, you know, they can block off the grill and do all that. It's a different amount of, of airflow and, and requirements because the motor, for example, which is the, you can see this radiator split into, well, almost 
quarters. So three quarters for the motor, one quarter for the batteries. This is to keep the motor, like its, its top temperature might be 80 degrees. So it's not like we're dealing with 200 degrees or huge, huge amounts of, of heat like you would in an internal combustion engine. And the batteries too, small radiator, really just to keep that, that liquid just a bit above the ambient. The batteries kind of love to be 25 degrees on average. There's reasons that you might want to heat them. Uh, usually you don't want to cool them because you don't want them charging or discharging when they're too cold, so under sort of negative five Celsius. So we do heating and we do cooling and we want to just regulate that temperature across every cell in the car so they all discharge and charge at the, at the same rate and we keep a very balanced battery pack. We're under the engine bay here and, well, engine bay, uh, battery, front battery bay, uh, original engine bay, where the 10 Tesla modules are. So that's six on this side, um, all flat stacked on top of each other and four on this side. The reason for this gap is the diff pumpkin that's here, but more importantly, the uh, power steering unit that's there and needs to be worked around. So there's a little bit of gap here. There'll be high voltage cabling running through here. Uh, again, these are just these conduits are just mock up for the for the cooling system that needs to run to back to the radiator there at the front. Um, but you can see plenty of space. Now we hang some other electronics off. Back uh, there will be the condenser for the aircon because there's a bit of space you can see between the the bulkhead and the battery pack, um, and then some other components that live kind of what is essentially in this this gap here. Um, otherwise, it's picking up the well original engine mounts. Uh, however, so this is the system designed by Electric Classic Cars in the UK for Defenders, and it's been designed for the later sort of Puma models, so 2007 onwards. They had a particular uh, engine mount, obviously different engine, different mount. This battery box has been designed for those, so we basically recreated the engine mounts for the Puma uh, onto this chassis so that we could pick up the battery box uh, the original battery box design from those guys. So you can see that it's, you know, quite a few, every Tesla module is 25 kilos. There's 10 of them. So 250 kilos of batteries and probably another 100 kilos of other stuff, including the, the steel shell of the pack. So quite a bit to, to mount. And you can see we've picked it up with bracketry here and on the other side there too. Um, little, few little things you can also see down here, some, some pumps, um, I don't know, what's it say? Battery coolant pump um, on that little sticker. So that was battery coolant pump. There'll be some other pumps around there and you can see the front face of the, the motor um, with the custom, uh, I guess, cross member that's a gearbox replacement cross member, uh, again, from Electric Classic Cars. These are the original body panels. Uh, so these were the 1986 uh, pieces. So they've been uh, sandblasted and, and stripped back and, and panel beaten a little bit to get them into a bit better shape than they were, but that was surprisingly good. This is the original, uh, what was fiberglass. Uh, originally, you know, that later changed in, in Defenders, but this shape sort of remained. But this kind of front grill was a bit of a unique county thing. We'll be doing our own kind of custom uh, grill, picking up some of the stuff we do for series with the woven mesh kind of, a, well, not, a, I was gonna say effect, but the real woven mesh that we use usually, um, and doing some stuff with some the lighting and spotlights and different stuff in there. You can see a few of the access ports that will be here. And the reason there's access ports is because the batteries will be living in this area of the vehicle. Um, and there'll be a false floor across here. And there'll be some electronics batteries kind of finishing here. Well, actually at that black line there. So there's a few electron other electronics that are sitting in here, as well as a lot of other electronics you can see some of the junction boxes that will be living and, and charges that will be living under the tub here. So there's a little bit of stuff here. These give us, oh, look, service access, not day-to-day -day access really, but service access through this rear bulkhead, um, which will sit under this galvanized capping and give us access into that, that area. You can also see some cable ties and stuff around because we're mocking up positions of things. So the AC compressor, the uh, the compressor, actually the air compressor and the tank and the controller for the air suspension. So we've removed the coils and it is just, thank you, Frida. Let me just hop out of the way over here. Um, 
So we've removed the coils and it's full height adjustable air suspension airbags. So lower at speed and for access into garages and things, and then higher for off-road. You can also see a lot of this conduit, um, this white kind of cream conduit around. That is just a mock-up for the coolant lines. So we have to cool the motor, of course, we've got to cool the batteries at rear. And there's a bit of plumbing to do because you've got to cool everything, all the batteries anyway, in parallel. So you don't want the coolant going into the first battery, then the second and third and so on, because by the time you get to the last, you've got a very different temperature. So all batteries, the coolant comes from the radiator through all the batteries at the same time and then back out of all the batteries at the same time. And so that requires a little bit more plumbing. And of course the motor itself uh, has a coolant loop too. A lot of the area under here that was fuel tank, exhaust system, all of that, it will be occupied by chargers, um, junction boxes, other electrical stuff that needs to fit into this to give it all the capability that it will have, which is actually like a, you know, 100 kilowatt fast charging, um, three phase charging, AC charging as well. So really all the charging capability of a modern vehicle and, and battery capacity to match, it's gonna be pretty cool. Adding air suspension to any Defender is a pretty transformative thing. So you get a really much more comfortable ride, um, but you also get, you know, a two inch lift when you need it and a, a raised, a lowered suspension, sorry, when you don't, if you need to get into a car park or your own garage or something like that. Airbag Man in Queensland here in Australia do a full kit for Land Rovers. So that's every bracket, the shock offset towers, um, because obviously you can't do coilovers and all this kind of stuff anymore. They do the shock offset towers, they do all the bracketry for the compressor and the controller that you see over there, all the wiring loom, the, the sensors, so you can do self-leveling, so it understands what the four corners of the vehicle are doing, and you can you know, essentially always hit a button to get the vehicle back to level, whether you've got a rooftop tent on, or you're towing and there's a, a drop at the rear, you can you can have a, I guess, what is a very modern suspension system uh, in a very classic vehicle. And, you know, apart from, I guess, people are always concerned about the, the durability of this stuff. These are, these are what they run in trucks, you know? It's a lot of heavy vehicles run airbags these days. Um, you know, it's a very rare case where you're gonna get something that, um, that's, you know, destroying this and so for the most part for most people most of the time um, this is uh, a fantastic suspension system um, if you can justify the price so it's special because it's going to be probably the fastest defender in australia but it's also going to be one of the most luxurious as well this is why you don't work in here full time because look at you you're a dirty rat eating everyone's face who needs to work under a car do you say? Yes, you agree. You are a rat. Atchikov.